Hi, I'm Dan Wiggins, co-founder and one of the engineers here at Periodic Audio. In this video, we're going to show you how we assemble our IEMs. We'll cover how we put all the parts together to pull off our award-winning products. Now, we're not going to cover how we build our transducers. That has several proprietary trade secrets about the process and equipment used. But we'll show you everything else. How all the other parts come together. And yes, we do it right here in Ventura, California. Just like our engineering, we don't outsource our assembly or testing. We own it all, as you'll soon see. So with that, let's get started. The first step, like any good manufacturing process, is to pull together all the individual parts you need. In this case, we use our own custom designed and 3D printed assembly tray and jig. This jig, in white, holds all the parts needed and provides a few mounted tools to assist in the process of assembly. Right now, this jig is loaded with the outer bodies left and right. While we use the same tooling for the left and right sides, we do pre-press different grills, red or black, to indicate which side is which. We're not showing the press process as it's really not that important to the overall assembly. This jig also holds the port tubes. Yes, we use discrete port tubes to provide the extremely deep, powerful, and exceptionally low distortion base we're so well known for. The port tube is a small molded component with a mounting flange and is color coordinated to match the rear counterbalance. It also holds what we call the PC core, an inner, non-visible component that seals the acoustic chamber completely. This part ensures we have a perfect acoustic seal, the chamber is of the right volume, and keeps all glue lines completely invisible. We also have our rear counterbalances ready for mounting. These are metal injection molded components made of 3 or 4 grade stainless steel. Each part is then polished on the outside surfaces before being vapor deposition coated in the desired finish. And of course, a full line of transducers. These are the heart of the beast. Our own custom designed 10 millimeter diameter unit. It's exactly 10 millimeters in diameter, 4.5 millimeters tall, and shares all the same parts for each model, save for the material we use for the diaphragm. This jig holds enough parts to make 10 pairs of IEMs. As you'll see, it's not a complex process, and a trained assembler can build 10 units in about 90 minutes. Part of this speed comes from the ease of assembly we designed into each part and the fact that each part has keyed features that force alignment in one way. It's literally impossible to build one of these wrong. If we do have a failure of assembly, it's typically a polarity issue where the voice coil was wired upside down, or a scratch on the body from handling. We start the process by adding a gasket to the front of the transducer. This is a custom die-cut closed cell foam gasket with pressure sensitive adhesive on both sides. It lives on its own sheet of backing so it doesn't get stuck to the jig. We take the gasket and add it to the front of the transducer. Once the seal is completed and inspected, we place the transducer on a weighted magnet stand to hold it for the next steps. Next, we'll take one of the leads from the cable assembly and fade it through the neck of the body. The wires are color coded red and plain for right and green and plain for left. Plain indicates a common ground for audio. In this case, we're connecting into the left body, so we're using a green and common lead for the cable assembly. The cable is pushed through the neck and then brought over to the transducer. As mentioned earlier, the transducer is held in position on a weighted base with a magnet. This keeps it oriented in the proper position and holds it for the next step, which is to solder the cable assembly leads to the transducer. As we're dealing with very high strength neomagnets, we use pure copper tips in our Hako soldering station. Copper is non-magnetic, so the tip isn't pulled around by the magnet. We only use lead-free solder so that we can export our products worldwide. Once the soldering is completed, we then mount the transducer. First, we peel off the other PSA cover so that the gasket is now exposed. The gasket ensures an airtight seal around the front of the transducer to the nozzle and also provides a compliant mount to dramatically reduce mechanical vibration noise. The transducer is positioned in the body and we use a custom push rod with a soft tip to fully ram the transducer down to the front of the body and create the seal. The transducer's rear is sealed as well. We draw a thin bead of polyvinyl acetate glue. This is a soft, flexible, water-based glue that flows into the gap around the transducer. Once the bead is complete, we mount the cable assembly. The excess wire is pulled through and then the cable lock is seated. The cable lock has small fingers and hooks that grab onto the internal lip of the body and make a secure connection. These fingers also engage with a boss in the body to prevent rotation, thereby immobilizing the cable lock. The lock is secured to the body by using a drop of cyanoacrylate glue. Lastly, we dress the excess wire. This is the wire slack needed during assembly. 
We twist the wire into a small spiral, then tuck it next to the transducer to ensure it is clear and will not interfere with the next assembly steps. Now we move on to the port installation. First we add small drops of glue to the inside of the main body where the port will mount. This is the same CA glue as used in the previous steps. We take a port from the jig and place it on the port installation tool. This tool is mounted to the jig and has a small spur that locates the port and holds it in perfect alignment. This enables simple positioning of the main body, then pressing down on the port for a few seconds to completely secure the port to the body. Now it's time to seal things up. We use the CA glue again to place a few drops on the side of the port. These drops will be used to secure the PC core to the assembly so that we can apply a complete seal. The PC core is keyed so it fits in around the port tube and the cable lock. You cannot install it upside down or rotate it in any way. The PC core snaps into place with an audible click, letting the assembler know it's fully seated. We then pull back the strain relief to expose the cable lock molded around the cable. We apply a small drop of the same CA glue used in the other steps. We bring the strain relief back up over the cable lock and spin the relief to spread the glue all the way around. When it dries, in about two minutes, the strain relief will never come off without severe abuse. Then we seal the PC core. We use the PVA glue to draw a bead around the junction of the PC core and the main body. This creates the internal airtight seal for the acoustic chamber and that guarantees perfect acoustics. There is a molded groove that provides a place to solidly locate the glue so it does not flow outside. Now it's time to finish the assembly. We use a few drops of the CA glue on the back of the PC core. The PC core has a pair of alignment holes that match with pins on the back of the caps. We cover these holes and the space between with the CA glue. A cap is selected and aligned so that its pins can press through the holes. This glues the pins into the holes and the cap onto the PC core. Excess glue does not squeeze out because of the glue groove in the PC core. The unit is visually inspected to be aligned and the assembly is complete. Once one side is completed, we place it in the curing holder built into the jig, and then we repeat the process for the other side. The entire process is the same since we maintain a high degree of symmetry between the two sides. The only difference is which cable assembly lead is used and which color grill for the main body is used. The other side is placed into the jig, allowed to sit for one minute to finish drying. Once the drying process has been finished, it's time to acoustically test the units. For this step, we use a Crysound 6151B analyzer. The 6151 tests both sides simultaneously. We place one of each side into an IEC 711 standard coupler mounted to its matching 506 preamplifier. This system measures the frequency response, distortion, impedance, polarity, and sensitivity of each channel, as well as overall channel balance. We run these tests at 566 millivolts, representing a 112 dB SPL average level. As you can see, it takes about 3 seconds to do all these measurements. The results are shown as green for pass, red for fail. And there you have it. That's how we build and test every single IEM we ship. All done in-house, one unit at a time. Highly repeatable because of the engineering. Designed to be assembled just one way. Tool to provide the clearances and tolerances we need and test it to ensure perfect sound. After this process, it's simply a matter of placing them in their packaging along with the accessories and then sending them out to our growing customer base. I hope you've enjoyed this little video covering how we do things here. Yeah, it's all hand built right here in Ventura, California. We own every step of the process from engineering to tooling to production to testing. It's this attention to detail and complete ownership of the process that enables us to offer our class leading five year warranty. Our products are just better because they're designed and built that way. Thanks for stopping by.